So, you know, as you know, it isn't just at Christmas time, but there's a lot of people that do have like a negativity or like, um, I can feel it. It's, let, me, let me describe it as I feel into it, as I feel into people's bodies as well. But basically, you know, it's kind of like that experience where you kind of hold back your own joy. You hold back, you know, your, your laughter, your, your excitement, your passion, your aliveness. It's like, it's like holding it back. So this time of year, you know, like, I get that this is like a man-made celebration. I get that, okay? And it's been going on for quite some time, and people buy into it and believe it and get all excited about it. So this is the perfect time to really, really look at that feeling that we do have that bah humbug, you know? And I'm sure that sometimes people feel really open and expanded and excited, and other times they don't. And then some people um, always feel that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's always a withhold, there's always a holding back, there's always some kind of protection or something in the heart center that you can feel. Sometimes it might feel like a block, it might feel like there's an actual energetic blockage in the heart center. Um, it will come out as a feeling like you're, you know, you want to express but you just can't break through. You know what I'm saying? It's that feeling where you're trying to break through something and you just can't. Okay? So, I mean, we all know that if you could do it, you would. So, obviously there's interferences. Obviously there's things that are blocking that heart center and hiding who we really are. So there's a little bit of, well, I'm going to say, danger for some people. And actually for most of humanity, there is a danger at times, not always, but in different situations with different people. It can feel dangerous, not that you're thinking that with your mind, but on an energetic level, on a subconscious level, on a feeling level, there is a danger of truly just being who you are, okay? Most of this feeling of danger is not coming from this lifetime. Remember that whatever's happening now is a culmination of all your past incarnational experiences. So your behaviors, your actions are coming from, and you're just recycling and pulling in more of the same so that you can unwind it. So basically, what we want to start doing is looking at where, you're, where it became unsafe, where it became dangerous to truly be that fullest expression, to share your excitement. Okay, how many people, even as a kid, you know, there are some people that as a child, I have, I swear to God, I have clients that have said, I couldn't laugh, I couldn't be too loud because I'd be, get in trouble for being too happy, making too much noise, getting too excited, and getting punished for that, okay? That's a simple one. So there's many, many times in your, in your life stream and in, in past incarnational experiences where it has been dangerous, where something really bad did happen to you because of that full expression, okay? I mean, even now, you, you'll notice that with different people in your life, you, you respond to where they are. Do you know what I'm saying? You be... You meet somebody and you meet them where you feel them. So you're not really just being your authentic self, you're meeting them where they live, okay? I'm thinking everybody does it to some degree, unless you're totally asleep or totally out of your body and then you're just being, you know, whatever and that, that isn't even you, you know? <laughs> That's usually the other entities inside of you, okay? So, you know, it's about, this time of year is really about the heart, it's about celebration, it's about connection, it's the giving and the receiving, and it isn't so much, I mean, I know it's a big present thing, you know, giving gifts and all that, but it's more than that. It's really about the celebration of your connection, your heart connections with one another. And when you withhold that, check this out, you're going to like this, when you withhold yourself, when you withhold who you are, you are, you are actually punishing others, okay? You punish them by not letting them see you, know you, experience you with those withholds. 
And in the unraveling today, when we start lighting things up, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you just think about different times when you were feeling or were in a situation of, of just connecting and, and letting yourself just feel the celebration of love, of life, of passion, of aliveness, of your own expression. And then I want you just to feel how that feels in your body. Okay, remember that when we do this work, when you feel in to how it makes you feel, that's what shows up in, in your energy field and it, it lights things up in your body. It lights up the entities that are interfering that have like energy. It's also lighting up your, um, your uh, beliefs. And remember, beliefs are not the truth. Beliefs are created through something else that you have been giving information on and you buy into it and you believe it. It is not the absolute. The only thing that's absolute is your core divine self, creator incarnate, that divine light that you are. So we're unraveling and releasing and removing the blockages and the energies and interferences that are inhibiting you just from being that divine creator incarnate. And the energy in the heart center has a lots, of, lots and lots of pieces to it. So remember, we're not just going to be dealing with entities. We're going to be dealing with past lives. And here's another thing. This is just presenting, so I'm just speaking it as it presents. But when there's negative feelings, negative like, um, okay, for example, this is really simple to kind of get a, get a handle on or get a concept of. As a child, I'm sure you can all remember a time when you felt like your mother or father didn't love you. Did anybody ever feel that? <laughs> Maybe at least once. <laughs> okay, so that feeling, when a child goes into that feeling of I'm not loved, I'm not wanted, that creates, there's a sadness, isn't there? There's a deep sadness. And then there's not just a sadness, but there's a longing. But then too what happens is, have you noticed too that the other side of that is, the child will want to punish somebody or take that there because they're sad. They got their feelings hurt and now they're going to take it out on their siblings or a friend or their toys. Have you know what I'm talking about? You know, there's a reaction. Okay. And that reaction is a negative feeling where we want to cause harm to something or break something or hurt somebody else. Okay. Once we do that, that energy of negativity opens doorways, opens gateways for darker energies to literally come into our energy field. Okay, you with me? So the more, okay, oh yeah, no, I'm going to have. So remember how I've, some of you, remember how I've talked about in different countries, you'll see a lot of blackness, there's a lot of hatred, there's a lot of judgment, there's a lot of disconnection, there's a lot of. Um, you know, belief systems that, that become really intense and really hurtful. Well, the blackness there is so intense because the whole culture is pulling up the blackness. They're inviting in and welcoming into their lives and their bodies, into their country, the blackness, dark energy, dark powers. Okay, so same thing is happening when, <clears throat> even as a child, you're in that state of wanting to cause harm to something or someone, that's a negative energy, that's a dark energy. And that energy, you're, you're literally opening the gateways, you're opening the doors for the energy of darkness to come into your physical body, to come into your life, okay? And once that gets anchored in, then it becomes easy for the negativity to get stronger or to become more pervasive in one's life. Or the default is now one of, you know, revenge or anger. As we get older, then you see more and more negativity. Well, partly what's happening, if you start watching someone's energy field that has a lot of negativity, you're going to find that they have a lot of energy entwined in their energy field, in their body and around their body. Sometimes they have actually literally called in like what we call minions. These are servants of the powers of darkness. Sometimes they look like human beings. Sometimes they look like little creatures, little gargoyles or some kind of demon little thing. But you know, you've welcomed them in unknowingly. See, we don't have these teachings. No one's telling you, oh, 
If you really feel that feeling where you want to cause harm, be aware. Be aware that you could be opening some doors and allowing the energies of darkness to come in. You know, where, did you learn that anywhere? Right. <clears throat> what you learned was stop doing that or you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get punished. So, you know, so negative energy cook brings in more in negative energy. So we just keep compounding our experience. So there's going to be negative or dark energy. What it looks like, just so you know, it's almost like a, a veil, like a veil with little holes in it. So when I'm tracking people's energy field, I can see these, these veils of energy that are literally around the physical body that they've actually called in. So it's in the body, around the body. Sometimes I can see some minions that are definitely in service, waiting for the command, you know, waiting for you to want to hurt somebody or be mad at somebody or want revenge or any of that. And then those little minions go and do your job for you. You didn't know that, did you? Sometimes, <laughs> check it out. Those of you who can sense energy and see energy, watch what happens. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, okay, so that feeling of being enraged, even though you're kind of containing it, mm -hmm. you're actually holding your little minions in. <laughs> but if you let them go, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> they'd be out attacking and doing stuff, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, they even have like a voice. Uh -huh. you know, there's, there's language in there, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, those voices, yeah, yeah. So, so what also happens is, whatever that energy is, you're going to also have a lot of entities inside of you that are the same, same kind of feelings. Pretend like everyone in this room all died and you all came into my body, okay? So all of you, I'd be feeling your feelings, I'd be feeling your thoughts, I'd, I'd be wanting your kinds of revenge or, you know, maybe I'd be holding it in, but I'd, it'd still be there, it'd still be in my energy field, okay? So just keep in mind, any negative thinking, any negative desire you have for another, you're opening doorways, you're inviting darkness into your world. Okay? And when you really feel that feeling of really wanting to punish somebody or torture somebody or hurt somebody or, you know, wish them ill or want them to wake up or call them stupid or whatever, I'm laughing at that one because I do that all the time. <laughs> but, you know, watch what happens with the energy. Just watch it. You'll just see these little things, just dark energy gone. And then, of course, all the other ent entities inside. So we want to clean those out as well. Now, you're also going to have perpetrator energy, which is somebody else's emotional energy that is not an entity. Be really clear on that. It's like, if I have a desire or I want to punish somebody and I have that feeling, and I, I can just have that feeling, but I can send that emotion to that person. So their, their body is receiving a perpetrator energy that is not an entity. Okay, there's a difference between entity and perpetrator energy. It's not the same. One is emotional energy, one is true dead people or dead beings from other dimensions. Disincarnate beings, okay? And then Everything gets compounded with implants. So whatever your issues are, whatever your, your life lessons are that you're uh, developing to learn and, and wake up, you're going to have implants in the body to help maintain and keep control. And actually sometimes they just like tweak little things just to see, well, if we tweak this here, what'll happen? Oh. Oh, now they really act out. Now they, oh, they're in a sane asylum. Okay, well, maybe we'll tone it down a little bit. Or no, let them go. Let them be totally insane. Let them get drugged up and more entities come into their body. So it's like an, it's like an unemotional scientific research that's happening in people's physical bodies. And if you think you've never had an implant, I'm telling you straight up, you probably have many for many reasons, okay? So we want to unravel those as well. And then, of course, we're going to do the past life stuff, okay? But it's a major process, you know, it's like oftentimes people think, okay, well, come in for a session or get a couple clearings and all is well. I should be totally awake. I should be totally free and liberated from all suffering. Mm -hmm. What you're not really getting is this is not your first rodeo here on planet Earth, okay? 
So you've got hundreds. Some of you have well over 500, 700, over 1,000. Some have a little less, but everyone has been here many, many, many times. And if you really look at this lifetime, what you've experienced now, this is just one lifetime. And truthfully, this is a pretty easy one. Okay? Take out grocery stores. Take out all the things where you can just go buy it. Okay? Then what? Turn, take off running water. Take off all the things that, that, you're not, that you take for granted that you have no awareness of. Go camp out for a while and not have anything, not even a stove, and then you're going to get a better sense of, oh, a little different. Okay, so, and then all the starvation, all the hunger, all, you know, lifetimes of that. So, you, you know, your other incarnations were much more intense. There was a lot more warring happening and much more victim things happening. So you've got all this energy inside, so, you know, it's a journey. Good news is, is this is an accelerated healing, which is totally awesome. You know, so that that's part of the, what's really cool is things are happening much quicker now as the veils are thinning. We're in the acceleration. Okay, so coming back to that bah humbug, you know, getting back that Christmas spirit. Okay, so right now, what I'd like you to do is just be right where you're at. Don't try to make anything different. Just be right where you're at. <clears throat> So I get that some, you know, there's some different things happening for different people. But just be right there. Now, I want you just to think about Christmas, okay? Just think about, maybe don't think about it as like, it's that celebration of the birth of Christ, you know, because people have really made it more about, let's give gifts, let's, you know, decorate and have parties and have fun, okay? So let's, let's just be real with what really is, okay? So in your world right now, when you think about this time period, for some people it's going to feel real stressful. Some people, too, don't have family. Some people have lost family. Remember I told you my son, killed, kid's father, killed himself at Christmas. So, you know, so there's that kind of memories that we have, and it affects our lives. So right now, when you think about this time period, and remember, let's just remember, this is really a time of connection. It's a time to really express love for one another. That's what it's really about, okay? And to be thankful for what we have and, and all the, the, the good things that come to us. So when you let yourself just kind of even think about that, can you feel, like if I say to you, you know, you're blessed. In some ways, you are blessed, okay? When you really start looking at all the, the things that are really happening in your world, in your life, there's, you are blessed, you are graced, okay? So when you let yourself just kind of feel that and you start thinking about the celebration of connection, the celebration of other, of sharing love, because when you're giving, isn't that like a really deep heart thing? Doesn't that feel really good to give someone because you're giving it to them, like the gift thing, you give them a gift because you love them. Now, of course, we have people giving gifts out of, you know, obligation or you're supposed to or whatever. And, it, and then there's all that shopping thing that creates all that mega stress. You know, when you go to those shopping mall things, I mean, I don't do that. But when you do, it's like, you know, it's like people get nuts. <laughs> what for? They're not there for that heart opening. They're there for, to get the present for so-and-so, for this person, for that person. What am I going to get them? You know, where's, so what this is, like, if this is really about the heart, is it really about giving the gifts or is it really about sharing your love for somebody? Okay? So I want you to think about this time. I want you to think about what it, that feels like. So right now, I want you just to go ahead and just think about different people in your life. Perhaps people that you're going to be with over the holidays, you know, over Christmas. Or people that you won't be with, that, but that at the same time, you have a lot of love for. Or even those who have passed and are on the other side. You know, whatever, whatever's in your heart, just let yourself just feel what's happening. Okay? Now, when you let yourself think about the, the feeling of just letting your heart be open, and sharing your love, whether it comes back to you or not, is a non-issue. It's about you. 
And here's the truth. You cannot feel somebody else's love, okay? So you don't have to worry about what they give back or what they think or what they feel. This is about you. This is about your celebration, your heart opening, your joy, your happiness, your love, your connection to humanity. When we have that closed heart, we are totally separate from one another. Got it? So, we want the heart open. Okay, so right now, go ahead and just think about the holidays. Think about the people that, that perhaps you'll be seeing. Think about the Christmas spirit. Notice what it feels like in your heart center. Does it feel like wide open? Can you feel some little, it may not, yeah, like little, yeah, like layers of blockages for some. Now, sometimes too, it can actually look, feel like, like you can feel some energy coming through, but there's still like little bars of energy that are inhibiting blocking. There isn't that open heart. Remember earlier I said, open heart, expression, full expression cannot, can be very dangerous. Many, many of you have died more than one time, and not in a very pretty way, through being your true expression, by sharing your love, sharing yourself, and being persecuted for it. Being hurt, being harmed, being killed, for real. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is as you let yourself just feel those little, those blockages, now remember, I'm going to remind you, when we are accessing the subconscious, we can do that when we let ourselves be with what we're consciously aware of, okay? So layers of the subconscious start to present and come up when we allow ourselves just to be with whatever it feels like, okay? 